2024 is shaped up to be a pretty good year for DDD so far. First, we got the Uvel support that we desperately needed to search DDD monsters with Nightmare Throne, and the additional support that Uvel gave us actually made the deck more viable, in my opinion. Later this year, around mid July, we're going to receive a new archetype called the Fiend Sniff. The Fiend Sniff is a level 6 fiend like monster archetype that focuses around fusion summoning and link summoning, but we're not really going to get into that because we don't really care too much about the whole archetype because the only thing that we care about is getting the level 6 fiend monster out in order to go ahead and summon for Wave High King Caesar. The reason we want to do this is just to get a quick out for against Nibiru, but personally I don't think it's really necessary to build an entire deck around one card that could potentially ruin our days. Now the Fiendsmith has a pretty unique monster because once you have it on the fear in, in the hand you can just discard it, add a Fiendsmith spell and trap card and then go from there. So I'll show you guys the basic combos for it but at first I wanted to show you guys the deck that I have here. Notice that I removed cards that some of you guys don't find necessary like DDDD, Super Dimensional Sovereign Emperor, Zero Paradox, Laplace, and so on. So with this 41, 41 card deck, and now that Nightmare Throne is technically in the TCG, we can go ahead and build a much simpler DDD deck that's still pretty viable. The place where you're going to have a bit of hard time is now in the extra deck. Since you have the Fiendsmith now being able to summon Wave High King Caesar, does that mean that you no longer need Flame King Gangish? Well, that's really up to you because you can have it on the field as a couple of other options. Like for example, if uh, you manage to summon a Bleeding King, summon this, overlay into um, Abyss King, and then summon a monster, and then discard and summon again. You can use the rev level four Orthros to go ahead and summon Bright Armageddon. Unfortunately, or fortunately for some folks, Barone de Flor is now out. So level 10 options are now just going to be High Gus King Caesar or Bright Armageddon. With that said, let's go take a look at the actual combo that you need if you happen to draw the Fiendsmith going first. And perfect, we drew the Fiendsmith. So first you need to activate its effect in the hand by discarding it so you can actually add the Fiendsmith Sanctus to your hand. Activate the effect. Special summon a token. Link into Fiendsmith Requiem. Fiendsmith Requiem's effect activates, allowing you to special summon the Fiendsmith, or rather a second copy of it from the deck to the field. Then you activate the Fiendsmith's secondary effect from the first one in the graveyard by returning Fiendsmith Requiem. And then you can go ahead and summon the second one. This is the fourth summon, which means Nibiru can hit you. So then on the fifth, you go ahead and summon Wave uh, High King Caesar, and then you can go off from there. Now, Nightmare Throne, you can activate. Frankly, I drew it, so now I can just add a Kepler and kind of go for the rest of the combo, right? Let's see what we can do now that we already have Wave um, High King Caesar on the field without having to rely on Flame King Gengish. We act the contract like we normally do. By the way, I noticed that it didn't save the previous deck, so cards like Super Dimensional Sovereign Emperor are still in my deck at the moment. So we're gonna get Griffin. Griffin activates the effect. Summon Link. Gilgamesh's effect so we need you and then okay so we want to use Orthros in this particular hand so this is what we're gonna do we can do this we're gonna activate Orthros's effect we're going to destroy Orthros and we're going to destroy the gate Orthros goes to the graveyard then we activate our scale of 10 then we get to go ahead and special summon we're gonna go Orthros and Griffin we don't want to discard the Lamia because we want to draw with Griffin's effect. Next up, Griffin activates. Discard. Draw. Perfect. We drew an Ash. Even better. Now we can go ahead and use this. What do we have in the graveyard? We just have him. Lamia. We can, since we have another contract, we can go ahead and overlay Gilgamesh and play contract. Under normal circumstances you wouldn't really need to do that um, 
You would do the normal place if you didn't even have Kepler in the hand. There's a number of ways you can do this, but now you have another way of summoning it. So like I said before, the main issue is trying to figure out your extra deck. You can add more stuff to it now because you don't really need Flame King Gengish. Uh, you can go ahead and add more cards to it. You can add a second uh, Wave Hiking Caesar if you like, since getting the Fiendsmith and recycling isn't really much of a problem. So assuming you couldn't get the Fiendsmith, there's another way you can utilize them if uh, you're able to. So Fiendsmith Sanctus, get it. We're working under the assumption that we don't need High King Caesar for whatever reason. So let's say you're mid-game and you're kind of like top decking at this point. You can go ahead and do this. The third one you're not really going to care too much about. It's going to be somewhere in your deck. You summon it to the field in defense mode. Then what you can do is you can actually activate the Fiendsmith Requiem's effect. You can target the Fiendsmith on your field, equip it. It gets a 2400 attack by the way, so you can go ahead and run over things or attack directly. But then the Fiendsmith has a secondary effect. You can target one Fiendsmith equip card you control and one monster on the field, send them to the graveyard. So it doesn't destroy, but it does target. So you can go ahead and activate it, choose the monster on the field that's giving you a hard time, send it to the graveyard and then you know continue from there that's the way that you would use the fiendsmith a little defensively so back to the deck it's pretty straightforward uh you have thomas so for the uh kali yuga plays and then you have same thing with uh go divine king zero range it's normal summon either savan newt uh, savan thomas to get the board or summon vice cream requiem to overlay into dale's machinex and then run into a defensive monster and then go into Zeus and kind of just go from there. So you don't need to do all that. Um, you can just remove Flame King Gengish, like I said, if you don't really need it, which also means that we probably don't even need Swirl Slime, but it might still be useful to run Flame King Gengish. I know a lot of folks don't like to use Purple Armageddon either. So we can just pretty much get rid of the uh, fusion aspect of the deck, really, which leaves us with 39 cards. We can add more to it and then we can add three more cards to the extra deck. I'll leave it up to you guys just for some creativity off top of my head. I can't really think of other cards to add. You guys know that I prefer to have large amount of cards inside of my deck, anywhere between 50 and 60, mainly because I like variety. Like I've shown you guys before on the YouTube community page, here's the current deck that I'm using. It's been doing pretty well. I've been very happy with it. The Fiendsmith, it probably doesn't really have a place for it, but it's actually proven useful whenever I do draw it. So I don't really rely on the uh, rank six plays that it can give me. But if I can play it, I can use it as fodder to search for Dark Contract of the Gate or activate it so that I can bait an Ash Blossom or any other type of negate because I usually get one of these other things here. You can use cards like Set Rotation if you like. So you can uh, go ahead and set Nightmare Throne and then set Dark Contract of the Patent License. You can get your throne and then you can get Savant Kepler too. But anyway, that happens to be a quick description of the Fiend Smith. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any other main deck ideas or extra deck now that we can technically remove the fusion aspect of the deck. Personally, I would continue with Flame High King Gangish into the deck, mainly for the back row uh, issues that we kind of face. So maybe through, get rid of Contract with the Errors and Contract with the Eternal Darkness. But the deck is not particularly good against some of the heavy meta decks that we have out there if we can get fiendsmith on the first turn great if we cannot then we're going to essentially have a bad time summoning it in the field doesn't necessarily means that we're going to go in and have a winner but if you are going second and you get fiendsmith doing the combo that i just showed you a little earlier will force your opponent to essentially think twice and potentially get rid of one of their negates or destructions or anything like that same thing with the combo of getting contact with the gate and then having vice king wreck him in the hand you get to go ahead and summon out uh deus machinex and pop a card and hopefully it'll disturb the opponent and then you can summon kepler and go into your combos but personally, I like having the uh, main deck mon boss monsters like Laplace and, or even Sovereign Emperor, just so I can have a little bit extra to the field. A deck like this is pretty good for going first, but going second, you, you know, you kind of have to figure out a way to work around your opponent's strategies. That's the reason why I ended up going with decks like this. But anyway, uh, I've already talked too much. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys are going to give Fiendsmith a try, or maybe it's not even worth it. But it is another option if you guys are truly worried about cards like Nibiru. I'll see you guys next time.